Well, good morning. This is Mike Torino. Welcome back. And if this is your first time viewing this channel, check out video 00. This is episode 26. It's been a while since my last episode. One of the big things that we accomplished was the installation of stainless steel railings all around the perimeter of the upper deck. And I'll give you a closer shot at those. I'm happy with the crew that did this. This is 100% 304 stainless steel. It consists of five rows. The upper and lower are two inch and the middle three are one and a half inches in diameter. These railings go all the way around and we use the same material for the banister for the stairway going down to the first level. Now up above me where the outdoor unit for this air conditioner is, they're going to install the same railing around the top of the perimeter of the CR's roof and we'll leave a little opening or walkway so I can get a ladder here and go up onto the roof to do whatever I need to do with that air conditioner and or our water tank. It's also going to make a really nice viewing platform to get three levels up to see the Tayabas Bay to my left and the mountain to my right. I'll give you a closer view of the stainless steel railings we installed. The railings start here as you come up the stairway and they go all around the perimeter to the overhang and they flow all the way down to the other end and then terminate behind the air conditioner unit over there. We're also going to have the same railings on top as I said on top of the CR there. As I head downstairs we have our same railing or banister. Here is another view of the planter that we installed over the box culvert. Already have some vegetables growing in here. And then here is the wall. This will go away, but this will be the view from the street. And then behind the wall, we have our outdoor unit for the one of the three horsepower air conditioners inside and a nice little storage area here under the stairs. One thing I don't know if you noticed during the last episode, but these are the steel and concrete covers that we installed for over the box culvert. And it just so happened there were six meters. Each of these are one meter and my name is six letters long so I went ahead and did a little design with some red pebble and we have T O R I N O so that worked out great reinstalled our septic tank after the problem we had in I think it was episode 24 or 23 where our septic tank floated but we have that reinstalled and we created a concrete lid over it. It's not putting pressure at all on the septic tank itself, but this is going to prevent any damage while we're working in here and give it some more stability when we put some more weight on it in the garage here. It's also going to serve as forming up our portholes for clean out and inspection of the septic tank. Here's one of our air conditioners, three horsepower, Dakin unit. The other one is across the room. More electrical panels are in. I've got three stainless steel fans installed in the garage now and we've got one control unit here and two control units on the other side of the garage. Here's a shot of the, of the three fans. Another really big thing that we've done since the last episode is we've compacted our floor of the garage in waiting for the, the right time to do our concrete pour. I also mentioned in the previous video that we found some really nice one inch plus clean gravel 
and we've got four inches down here which we've compacted already and uh, we'll probably hit it one more time with the compactor and then I'm going to lay my moisture retarder I've got some eight mil plastic that I'm going to try and experiment with to see what happens with uh, retarding any kind of moisture that might come up this is our sump it's situated in the center of the garage and it's going to be more than one meter deep with a gravel bottom and we're slowly boxing this in getting ready for the pour and the concrete level will be somewhere around here we're going to put six more inches of concrete total on top of this gravel inside this sump will be a one horsepower pump and this pump is going to have a hard electrical connection underneath the floor with its own circuit breaker we're going to install our glass block in this window this is the side window and this should go in today I've got four cases of glass block and it's called wave it's one of the more transparent types of glass block so you can't really see through it but it will let in some ambient light here's a close-up of our two controllers for two of the fans our second Daikin three horsepower indoor unit and a little exhaust fan here this area around here will be kind of the office area for the garage so I've got a lot of cat 6 cable coming in here for my IP cameras and I'll probably put a little server box mounted on the wall for some additional equipment got some outlets for our TV there will probably be a concrete workbench going down this wall and maybe coming across here as we move down got my water bib here and these outlets are going to be our high power outlets we'll have probably 230 amps and at least 150 amp dedicated outlet here for a air compressor a 50 amp welder another welder or a plasma cutter Moving down, I'm going to build a concrete sink here. It'll probably be a two-bin type sink. Very deep so I can wash parts on this side. And then this side of the sink will be a clean sink. And we've got plenty of power here as well. Over on this wall, I'll probably put a sandblaster and maybe some other tools like pipe bending equipment things like that this is my Starlink router I did a Starlink unboxing if you want to check that out but this router here is now working great upon this entry door I have a emergency light and what I've decided to do with the entry door and this window is to hold off uh, I want to have a custom door as you can see this door it's over a hundred inches high and I want to create a custom steel door for this with another custom screen door in front of that and I do want glass block in this window here but I'm told by the engineer that it may have an issue when we get our occupancy permit uh, because they feel that there's not enough ventilation even though I have three gigantic doors right here so I'm gonna hold off on this and maybe block it off with wood and uh, see what happens with that and we have contracted with the same crew that created the stainless steel railings upstairs to create our three roll-up doors so I'm so happy with what they did upstairs. They're building the roll-up doors as we speak right now. We've treated the, the sub-base of the floor before the gravel with lignum, but one of my guys is putting another application around the footer of the garage, the circumference here. 
and selignum is an anti-termite Someone treatment. asked me where I get all my equipment or material. A lot of the material, of course, is sourced locally. There's also two local websites, one called Lazada, one called Shopee, and I think they're all based out of China and or Singapore. These sites are kind of like mini Amazon.coms. And speaking of Amazon.com, you may have already know, but they ship here now to the Philippines, and sometimes it's free shipping. I've managed to get a lot of things from Amazon, and the shipping is free. Sometimes you have to spend maybe $35 or $45, $50 per order to achieve that free shipping, but it's excellent and it's fast. I mean, it's not two or three days like you might be used to. It's more like five or seven days, and you have tracking just like normal. For example, I ordered IP cameras for the garage, and I just received them today, and I think I placed the order less than a week ago. So that's really something that's another straw in the hat for being an expat here in the Philippines. If you find any of my information or antics helpful, please subscribe so you can be notified of the next video. See you next time.